Marty Shupak and the Youth Sports Club is proud to present the infield team play and strategies video. This program will go into some of the most common infield situations that occur in youth baseball, such as defending against bunts, first and third situations, and relays. The video will also show some of the most challenging infield strategies teams can try, depending upon age and skill level, which will give them an advantage over their opponent. In youth baseball, the quality of play that a team's infield shows can determine success or failure in games. Defense is one of the most underrated aspects of baseball, especially in youth baseball. The information given in infield team play and strategies will only work if parents and coaches of youth players teach, practice, and reinforce. As always, Marty Shupak and the Youth Sports Club encourage improve as individuals, improve as a team, and have fun. Hi, my name is Marty Shupak, and I'm the creator of the infield team play and strategies video. I just want to go over a few things. We as coaches tend to try to teach too much at one time to the young players 10, 11, 12. What I learned from experience is if you have a list of different strategies you want to teach these kids, teach them over the course of a season. What I try to do is I have a rule of thumb that I try to practice two times for every game scheduled during the season. So if we have 20 games scheduled, I try to have at least 40 practices. Sometimes I'm able to get to that number. Sometimes I'm not. I'll go over a few practices. I'll go under a few practices. But I've learned that teaching baseball happens at the practices, not really during the games. You could take what happened in the games and go over it in the practices, and that's where you reinforce it. Now, a lot of these strategies, you really have to recognize the talent on your team. Sometimes you'll have a team and you won't be able to do a lot of these strategies. Some strategies are only really good for talent for all-stars. Another word of advice, if you have players on your team that are lefties, please give them a chance to play the infield. A lot of these young players, they'll quit playing baseball after they're 12 years old. A lot of coaches won't play them at shortstop, second base, or third base, just because they're lefties. Give them a shot, I promise you, they're not going to lose a whole championship year just because they're lefty in the infield. Make sure also, you end every practice on a high note. You want players to want to come back to each and every practice, end it on a game, Batting practice, kids love. Do not deny them batting practice. Keep your practices short, anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes. I don't recommend any longer than 90 minutes. And I hope you enjoy this video. I wish you all to have a very good season. And this has been Marty Shupak. One, defend the bunt, man on third. With a base runner on third, the defensive team wants to freeze or delay him from scoring on a bunt thereby preventing a run and even getting him out. Watch the shortstop cover third. When the batter bunts and the third baseman moves in to make the fielding play, the shortstop will move quickly to cover third base behind the base runner. When the player picks the ball up, the coach yells out a signal, say green. Then the third baseman wheels around quickly and throws the ball to the shortstop. This play works. Two, man on third, bunt situation. Coaches can also get aggressive and be proactive with a base runner on third. Here, the pitcher will pitch out as the shortstop covers third. In this set play, the shortstop will cheat toward third base. The third baseman is coached to rush in an exaggerated distance. The batter might and should square to bunt, but the pitcher, on a designated signal, will throw a pitch out. On the pitch, the shortstop will sprint to cover third. The catcher will catch the pitch and instantly throw the ball to the shortstop covering third base. The left fielder must be in a position to back this play up. Three, first and third, throw down with shortstop fake. On this first and third steal situation, the shortstop moves almost in line with the throw and will move toward third as if holding the baseball trying to freeze the base runner. When the team at bat has base runners at first and third, have the team in the field have a signal, say yelling out Bobby, where the throw will go to second. 
when the catcher throws the ball down to second. The shortstop acts like he catches the ball at the exact moment the ball passes him. He then turns directly toward third base with his throwing hand in his glove, hidden deceptively trying to convince the third base coach he actually caught the ball. He is moving toward third with his arm cocked in his glove like he has the ball and is ready to throw it. Remember, sometimes the naked eye will see what is suggested. The ball going through to second base will hopefully get the runner. Four, man on third, first baseman goes home. The first baseman has the responsibility to cover home if the catcher decides to run the base runner at third back to the base. It is very important when there's a player at third base that if the catcher thinks he's too far off the base, he moves up the line, forcing the base runner back. If this situation occurs, the first baseman is responsible for covering home plate and should move to covering home as the catcher moves up the line toward third base. Many astute coaches will look for situations where the defensive team is out of position and take advantage of it. When practiced regularly, the first baseman will begin to move down the line toward home almost instinctively, but the coach should always reinforce this. Five, first and third, throw to third. On this first and third steal situation, the catcher will quickly throw the ball back to third. There are numerous options the defensive team has with a first and third situation. In this play, the catcher will catch the ball and quickly throw it down to third base. There are times that an over-aggressive base runner can be caught off guard, and the third baseman has a chance to tag him out. Before the pitch, the coach will yell out a signal so that the team recognizes where the throw is going. The third baseman should make sure he's even with the base so he has the best chance to tag the runner out. The left fielder should also be alert to back up the play. Six, first and third, throw to first. On this first and third steal situation, the first baseman plays deep and the throw comes to him. Another option is a hard throw to first base, trying to fool the third base coach and the runner at third. In a first and third situation, a good third base coach will watch to see if the catcher throws through to second base on a steal, and then will send the base runner. In this play, we're trying to create a little bit of an illusion, trying to get an aggressive coach to send the base runner at third prematurely. The coach of the fielding team will yell out a signal, which will tell the first baseman to move back a couple of steps toward the outfield grass before the pitch. This play is designed to draw the third base runner off the bag. The first baseman immediately runs at the runner bouncing off third, and if he has a play, will throw the ball to either third or home. Seven, first and third, hard throw to pitcher. On this first and third steal situation, the catcher throws the ball hard back to the pitcher. On this play, defending the first and third situation, the catcher will throw the ball back hard to the pitcher. Now, the pitcher can do a few things. One is to turn quickly to third and throw to catch the base runner leading too much. Another strategy on a hard throw to the pitcher is to turn toward third quickly, thereby freezing the runner, and turning to second and throwing the base runner who'd be running out. Remember, on any first and third situation where the runner is tagged out going from first to second, the fielder making the tag must pop up quickly, ready to throw the ball home to get the lead runner out. Eight, wild pitch. Second base backs up throw with multiple players on base. With multiple players on base. The second baseman goes to the base of the pitcher's mound. Many times when the pitcher covers home on a wild pitch and the catcher tosses the ball for the pitcher to apply the tag to the base runner charging home, that errors result. Frequently, the catcher's toss is not handled correctly and goes past the pitcher toward the pitcher's mound. And not just one, but two runners end up scoring. The best way to limit the damage is to teach for the second baseman to go to the base of the pitcher's mound on a wild pitch or passed ball. Knowing when and how to back up 
can help curtail one mistake from expanding into another mistake. 9. Pick off secondary base runner at first with pitch out. With runners on first and second, the pitcher pitches out and an attempt is made at the runner on first. The coach can signal the fielders of a pickoff play geared to getting the base runner at first out. Remember that the base runner at first is not the lead runner, and therefore the focus is not on him, but will be on the runner at second. The coach signals the play. The first baseman is covering close to the base. The pitcher throws a pitch out. While he's doing this, the first baseman is running toward the base as the ball crosses home and hopefully the base runner is taking an aggressive lead. The catcher quickly throws the ball to first. 10. Pick off secondary base runner at second. With runners on second and third, the pitcher pitches out and an attempt is made at the runner at second. As in the previous play with runners on first and second, the same play can work with runners on second and third if the defensive team is in a position to trade an out for a run. This is a much tougher play than the previous one because of the distance of the throw, but this can also work if practiced and if the coach determines the talent on his team will warrant an attempt. 11. Cutting off lead base runner after put out. With a runner on second, the first baseman runs to the pitcher with the ball after the out, holding the base runner at third. Here's a situation where there is a player on second base. The put out ends up at first. As soon as the first baseman secures the out, he must cut across the infield toward the pitcher's mound and hand the ball to the pitcher when he's on the pitching rubber. By cutting across the mound, he is cutting off any possibility of an aggressive and fast base runner continuing to run home. Practicing this with all of the players on the team who play first base is definitely recommended. 12. Pitcher covering first. The pitcher runs to cover first on a ball hit to the right side of the infield. A play that teams rarely practice is on a ball hit to the right side of the infield. This should be practiced with all of the pitchers on the team. After the pitch, if the ball is hit to either the first baseman or second baseman, the pitcher should automatically run toward first base, but aim at about six to eight feet before the base, then turn up the line parallel with the base. Not running directly will help prevent collisions at first base. The toss by the fielder is also just as important as getting to the base. When tossing the ball, the fielder should lead the pitcher at the base as he is running. 13. Rundowns in the infield. Rundowns and the way they are defended and the number of throws play a big part in youth baseball. Rundowns happen frequently in youth baseball games. There have been many theories written and spoken about. The most important aspect of rundowns, according to Marty Shupak, is to get the base runner to commit to a base and get him running at full speed and the defense should try not to make more than one throw one throw being the ideal number of throws. 14. Around the horn. In the around the horn drill, after the player catches and then throws the ball, he rotates with the other fielders at the base. Here is an infield drill that the players love and one that will show improvement as the year goes on if it's practiced regularly. This can be with from four to 12 players. The drill starts at home with the catcher throwing the ball to third base. The player there catches the ball and puts down a phantom tag, then throws the ball to second base. The player at second catches the ball and puts down the tag and continues to first base and so on. Once the player throws the ball, he quickly moves out of the way and the other player at the base moves in ready to retrieve the throw and then follows the sequence by throwing the baseball. A challenge here, once the players get comfortable with the drill, is to try it with two baseballs. Infield basketball throw. In a different type of warm-up drill, a basketball is used to simulate the correct way to field a ground ball. 
The size of the basketball is forcing the players not to lift their heads up too soon, which is a tendency in youth baseball. There are two lines of players. One line is at the second base position, and the other line of players is at first base. The coach rolls the basketball to the line near second base. Once the player fields the basketball and throws it to first base, both players go to the end of the other line. The youth baseball coach needs to look at ways to stimulate the teamy coaches throughout the season. Crossing over into other sports will help keep the interest of the players. 16. Third base drill, throwing. An old favorite drill from Marty Shupak is called the third base drill. In this drill, there are players at third base, first base, and home. There can be up to four players at each base. The coach throws the ball to third base instead of hitting it. And then the player who catches it throws it to first base, then home. After one player goes, he moves to the end of the line. When the coach wants the players to move to the next station, he yells, rotate, and the players will rotate clockwise. The essence of throwing the ball is that the players get more quality repetitions without the possibility of the coach mishitting the baseball and having the drill delayed. Marty Shupak's practice theories encompass players being stimulated while getting the most amount of repetitions possible. If coaches feel more comfortable hitting grounders, then by all means do it that way. Seventeen. Shortstop covers second steal. The shortstop covers second on a steal, with the appropriate fielders backing up the throw. When a player reaches first base, the players will communicate who will cover the base. With a player attempting to steal second base in youth baseball, a lot of coaches will work with both the shortstop covering second or the second baseman covering the base. In youth baseball, Marty Shupak recommends that it's best to have one position cover the base, and in this case, it's recommended that the shortstop cover the base with the second baseman backing up the throw. As we said, Marty Shupak always recommends and practices communication by name. 18. Relay from shortstop to second. On a base hit to left, the shortstop goes out to short left field. On a ball hit into the outfield, teams always need to practice the outfielder hitting the cutoff man. On a ball hit into left field or left center or center field, the shortstop will run out to retrieve the throw. Ideally, the fielder should try and line himself in a straight line from the outfielder and second base. This is tough for young players to do, but can be done if it's practiced from the beginning of the season to the end. When the shortstop catches the baseball, he should turn to his glove side, which is the proper side to throw from in baseball. 19. Relay from second to shortstop. On a base hit to right field, the second baseman goes out to short right field. Just as the shortstop's responsible for retrieving the throw on hits to certain locations, so is the second baseman. If a ball is hit out into right or right center, he must go out and retrieve the throw from the outfield. He'll turn to his glove side and make the throw to the shortstop, who is covering second base. 20. Infield fly balls. On infield fly balls, it's usually thought that the shortstop has priority over all infielders. In youth baseball, Coaches usually want their best fielders catching the ball when it is between fielders. Here we're observing balls hit to the left side of the infield near the shortstop and the third baseman. The shortstop calls it out. All the infielders should call for the ball even if it's hit right at them. Moving to the right side of the infield, again, the player must call for the baseball even if it is hit right to him. Corner infielders should practice catching fly balls in foul territory. And part of the skill of catching in foul territory is to learn how to catch with various distractions, especially near a fence. On a foul ball, the player needs to focus on the baseball in the air while feeling for any fence nearby 
and then going back to follow the ball into his glove. This is a must to practice. 21. Underhand Feed Drill In infield play, youth players need to know when to throw the underhand feed to a base. This should be practiced. Here we have a line at second base and a line at shortstop. The coach will throw a ground ball toss to the shortstop line, and when he does, the second baseman goes to cover the base. The shortstop tosses the ball to second, and then the player goes to the end of the other line. A teaching point is to tell the players to lead the other player, or underhand it to the base, and the fielder will catch up to it. 22. Underhand Feed Shuttle Drill An excellent individual drill to practice is the underhand feed shuttle drill. A player is situated between a number of baseballs on each side of him. On the go command, he will move from line to line, picking them up and tossing it underhand to either a coach or teammate. Even though the ball and person catching are stationary, this is excellent for reinforcing the muscle memory of getting low when fielding. For older players, the drill is an excellent conditioning drill. And now, let's look at each infield position and go over some of their responsibilities. 23. Pitcher ready position after pitch. The pitcher, as well as all fielders on the team, must always expect the ball to be hit to them. Having the pitcher ready to field the baseball after the pitch is not really practice. Many youth pitchers are not in the correct or pitch-ready position to field either a hard-line drive or a ground ball after he releases the baseball. Upon release of the baseball, the pitcher should be balanced with his shoulders square to home plate. He should also have his glove open, ready to field the ball and have his knees bent. Even though this skill should be practiced, Coaches should always remember that pitchers need to focus on the actual pitching and should not overemphasize being in a position to field the baseball, but it should be practiced. 24. Pitcher following lead base runner. With players on base, the pitcher must never turn his back on the lead base runner until he's on the pitching rubber. A good coach will always look for opportunities to advance his base runner any way he can. This is done sometimes when the pitcher is relaxed as he's going back to the mound for his next pitch. The pitcher should follow with his eyes the lead base runner until he gets to the pitching rubber. 25. Pitchers fielding with players on base. On balls hit to the pitcher with base runners on base, the pitcher looks back the lead runners and throws the batter out. Pitchers must recognize the base runner situation and try to hold runners from advancing while getting the out at first base. In youth baseball, if there are runners on base, either forced or not forced, the pitcher instinctively will sometimes throw to first base while the other base runner or base runners will advance. It should be practiced with a man on, say, second or third, and a ball hit right to the pitcher, that he turns to the lead runner right away and holds him on then throws to first to get the out. 26. Bases loaded, pitcher goes home. With the bases loaded and two outs, the pitcher can go home to get the last out. The surest way of getting an out should be taught and reinforced. Here's a situation that coaches may be reluctant to teach. The bases are loaded with two out. On a slow ground ball hit to the pitcher, Rather than throw it to first base, the better idea is to go where your momentum is taking you. In this case, the play would be to toss it underhand to home. In some cases, the pitcher can actually outrun the player at third and make the force play himself, touching home plate with the ball. 27. Pitcher catching pop flies. In baseball, it's frowned upon for pitchers to field pop-ups. This is mainly in the upper levels of play, like high school and beyond. In youth baseball, a lot of the times, the pitchers are the best athletes on the team, and this should be used to the team's advantage. 28. Pitcher Fielding Bunts Fielding bunts is another under-practice fielding skill by the pitcher. 
Many youth players are not adept at bunting, and when the pitcher is able to field the bunt, he should. But this, like any other fielding skill and situation, should be practiced. If the pitcher is fielding the bunt on the third base side, his momentum is going away from first base. The planting of his foot and making an accurate throw to first base cannot be overemphasized. Now, let's look at a few of the defensive responsibilities for the catcher. 29. Running at the base runner. Catchers should not hesitate to run at the lead base runner. In youth baseball, many times the coaches will teach their base runners to take an aggressive lead right after the pitch, trying to draw a throw. If the lead is an over-aggressive lead, the catcher should always run right at the base runner. Or, if there is more than one player on base, always run at the lead base runner. Remember that in youth baseball, the more the defensive team throws the baseball around, the more of a chance for an errant throw or catch. 30. Catcher should never be on his knees with men on base. When there are players on base, the catcher should always expect that the base runner will attempt to steal at any given opportunity. Opposing coaches are always looking for certain indications where he can give his players a sign to run. Catchers have to be taught never to throw the ball back to the pitcher from their knees with players on base. Catchers will not be able to generate enough arm strength from their knees, allowing base runners an opportunity to take advantage of an extra base. Catchers should get in the habit of throwing the ball back to the pitcher hard and not a looping high rainbow throw. This should be done with and without players on base. 31. No hands blocking. A great way to teach catchers to overcome any fear of being hit with a baseball is the no hands blocking drill. The catcher will clasp both hands together behind his back. A coach will then toss balls at the catcher who must get into the blocking position and keep the balls in front of the body. This drill is also great for teaching catchers to use the body when blocking and not to get caught up trying to catch every potential wild pitch securely in the glove. Proper technique is reinforced in this drill, such as keeping the chin pressed up against the chest. Coaches on the youth level should gauge by age and or ability if the player is able to do a drill like this. 32. Box Drill A challenging yet fun drill for the catcher is to pile up boxes on top of one another at each base for the catcher to aim at. A coach pitches the ball to the catcher. Upon receiving the ball, as if anticipating that an imaginary base runner will steal the next base, the catcher will pop up and try to knock down the boxes at each base. When throwing a runner out, the catcher should be popping up to throw the ball as they receive the ball. Both of their feet should be parallel to the base that they are aiming at. Transferring the ball from the glove to the throwing hand should be quick and effortless. The transfer should appear to be one fluid motion and the catcher should already be conditioned to finding the appropriate grip on the ball quickly. Catchers should then cock their arm with the ball behind their ear with their eyes fixed on the target before executing an accurate throw at the base with a proper follow through. In games, catchers want to throw the ball low to the base so that the fielder can easily apply a tag to the base runner. 33. First baseman. First baseman have a choice when a hitter reaches first base. The first baseman can play either in front or behind the base runner. Coaches should keep in mind that playing in front of the base runner limits the area where the first baseman can make a play comfortably. And if the first baseman is playing behind the base runner, sometimes his vision will be impaired by the base runner. The choice is up to the coach, but he should find out from the fielder which spot he feels more comfortable playing. 34. Stretch toward the throw, not the infielder. Many times the first baseman will stretch too soon. Many first basemen will tend to stretch with the wrong technique. The right way is for the first baseman to stretch to the throw and not to the fielder. The first baseman should face the infielder that fields the ball. Give him a good target with his glove open. Then he stretches out with his glove leg once the ball is thrown. And his foot should be near the edge of the base and not in the middle where he might get injured on a collision with the base runner. 
Young players at all infield positions should get in the habit of showing a target when receiving the baseball. This becomes a uniform technique and reinforces making accurate throws. 35. One-hop drill to first baseman. In youth baseball, the throwing distance for fielders can present challenges in reaching the first baseman on a fly. Some throws will come to first base on one or more bounces. Youth coaches should have all of their players take turns at first base and practice catching the baseball on one hop. Young players tend to turn their head. In this simple yet effective drill, reinforce to the players to watch the baseball go into the glove. This will help them keep their head down. Coaches can use soft covered balls or tennis balls to help take away any fear some players may have with this drill. 36. Second baseman. The second baseman backs up the catcher's throw to the pitcher after each pitch. In youth baseball, an errand throw can happen when the catcher throws the ball back to the pitcher after the pitch. The pitcher can also misplay the ball himself on the throwback. One of the responsibilities of the second baseman is when there are players on base, the second baseman has to back up the throw back to the pitcher from the catcher. An errant throw will give the offensive team an opportunity to advance on the base path if there's no backup. 37. Second baseman makes put out. Not just for second baseman, but good basic infield fundamentals, is for the infielder to step on the base himself rather than toss the ball on a force play. Remember that the more throws, the more of a chance for mistakes. Marty Shupak's insistence on communication between fielders is never more important than on an unassisted putout. 38. Shortstop. The shortstop position is not only the most important position in the infield, but it's the position that should reinforce communication on the team. Shouting out the number and holding up the appropriate number of fingers for outs is important and is teaching communication to both the person relaying the outs and the person listening. 39. Shortstop covers on steel. In youth baseball, familiarity is sometimes the best teacher. Reinforcing the same process can help young players perfect their techniques. Marty Shupak recommends one position covers the steel at second. Remember that we recommend the shortstop cover second on a steal. Limiting the number of responsibilities young players should remember is advised, as is keeping things as simple as possible. 40. Shortstop covers on bunt. The shortstop also might have to cover third base on occasions Responsibilities in the infield include thinking ahead with players on base. Coaches must teach even young players to anticipate what to do in different scenarios. No doubt this should be practiced. Some coaches tend to wait for the situation to come up in a game and yell out instructions for the first time. 41. Infield holes. Try to end all practices on a high note. In this game, the coach or players will hit tennis balls with a tennis racket. The players in the infield cannot go past the infield dirt. If a ball reaches the outfield grass, the team not fielding gets a point. Players don't have to catch a ball, but just stop it. Coaches can have the teams play a certain amount of innings or up to a certain point total. Marty Shupak's bonus tips for infield play. 1. Do not deny lefties a chance to play all infield positions in youth baseball. 2. If your league plays night games, have one or two night practices so all fielders can get used to the lights. 3. Use soft covered or tennis balls on drills at the beginning of the season. 4. On some infield drills, throwing the ball can be as effective as hitting it. 5. Backing up is important in the infield, but keep it simple 
not confusing. 6. Use a broken in catching glove instead of a new one that can take one to two years to be broken in. 7. Use the progression method. Teach one or two new concepts each week and reinforce them throughout the year instead of overloading your team. 8. Infielders must realize stopping a ground ball can be as effective as catching the ground. 9. Teach your team not to be umpire and play every infield hit as fair. 10. End every practice on a high note with a fun game or batting practice. The Infield Play and Strategies video shows some of the most common occurrences in youth baseball that happen in the infield. Successful infield play can be the difference in every game played during a season. The importance of teaching communication and repetition of drills in infield situations cannot be overemphasized. Creativity is always encouraged. The infield team play and strategies video will help new and experienced coaches convey baseball in a coachable manner. So let's get into our ready position and play the infield onto a successful season.